Hey guys, it's me, Spencer. Welcome to Sketch a Day. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on alerts because you don't want to miss when I go live Tuesdays or Wednesdays, trying to figure that out, Fridays and our new time Sundays. So you'll want to turn on alerts for those. Definitely come say hi on the Instagram and the socials. I'm at sketchaday.com. And be sure to check out sketchaday.com slash newsletter where you'll be able to sign up for this free super sketch tip guide. And that's basically just a collection of knowledge and things I've experienced over the years in my career that I wanted to share with you, including a free tutorial on how to draw and render a chair. So you'll want to check that out. So today I want to say thank you to our members on our Discord server. I will post the link in the description if you want to join that because there you'll be able to send me sketches and drawings. And special shout out to Tom for sending, well, posting this interesting sketch of his shoe. And I thought I'd take on the challenge of kind of redrawing this design, trying to stay true to the original intent, but fixing a couple of things with the sketch. So shout out and thank you to Tom. We will be using an iPad Pro with Procreate today. If you don't have that, that's okay. You can follow along with pens and pencils, markers, whatever you've got, it's all good. So let's get started. Okay, so on my iPad here, I have Tom's sketch and it looks to be some sort of trainer, you could say, shoe, simple design. We've got this fabric uh, section in the middle, tread and some details on the toe. So I'm gonna take this sketch and scale it down just a little bit. We're gonna use this as reference. And for purposes of this redraw, I'm going to kind of show you how to think through a bit of the mechanics of sketching something like this. So if you're gonna sketch a shoe, you kind of wanna think about the base of the shoe and overall proportion. And a great way to do this, one that I like, is you can just sketch a box, something like this, get a wireframe in place, frame this out and now we have enough to start sketching and working on a design. All right, so I wanna take a look at maybe the shape of the shoe and so about a little, little less than a half of the way in, I'm going to draw some straight lines toward the front. We're just gonna create a box or wireframe drawing of the shoe to begin with. And at this point, a little trapezoid like so. For the heel, actually this I'm gonna angle up ever so slightly like so. We can even connect these points and hopefully you can kind of see what's starting to happen here. But just drawing with some planes to kind of block things out, just like that. So we have the shape of what's called the upper on the shoe. Now for the rest of the shoe, and I'm gonna rotate this just a little bit here. For the rest of the shoe, the base, I'm gonna sketch this in blue so you guys can see that here in Procreate. Just like so. Nice little line. I'm basically taking this wireframe and offsetting it below in case you're wondering, how did I, how did I get that shape and come up with that? Just by offsetting and now, hopefully you guys can see how this is coming together as a sketch of a trainer. Now I have the wireframe and now, like I said, I wanna be true to Tom's design intent here and not change too much. So with that, I'm going to use this underlay in terms of shape to then create our final sketch and we'll render this thing up. All right, so I've got the frame for the shoe. Now I'm gonna crank the opacity of this layer down a bit, make a new layer, and we can even scale down our reference drawing just a little bit. Make sure this looks like a pretty good size. So on a new layer above everything else with the black Spencil, I am using my new brushes, which will be available soon. But now we can start to sketch some of these details in. All right, I'm gonna focus a bit on the overall silhouette here, because I think that's the most uh, important thing at this point. Let's just get this silhouette down 
with a couple sketch lines. And again, trying to stay true to the original design intent here and just fix a couple perspective and perhaps compositional elements as well. So using the blue lines as a guide, I'm able to quickly redraw, not trace, redraw my original sketch to a point where we now have a workable outline for this design. Now, in, in terms of design elements and what to do, one thing I find helpful is the idea of continuity. So if I have an element, for example, that I want to wrap across the entire shoe, continuity intention, meaning here at this point, I'm looking at Tom's design on the screen and just trying to, I think, and if I analyze this, this big red portion is a major part of the design. We've got the interesting area on the toe and this inset fabric. Okay, so taking that theme and working with this design overall, I'm going to kind of modify some of these lines a little bit and see if we can come up with something uh, workable here. Okay. So we've got this major element. I like how simple the shoe is, but again, if you look at the design composition, having this inflection point here introduces some interesting tension in the design, particularly as we have this fabric portion at the top that kind of intersects the rest of the design here. Okay, so I'm liking these lines compositionally. I'm liking Tom's design direction here and we're just going to work with it. Now the toe is interesting. It has these kind of three inset areas right here that we can work with. Um, I'll highlight this in blue. So one, two, three, these three kind of holes. We have some cuts in the tooling and some major element here as well. So analyzing the design in that sense, I can focus on these elements and now on my design here, I'm gonna modify a few things because I just kind of went with something generic to begin with. And I like the idea of Tom's cutouts. So I'm gonna hint at cutouts on the front like so. And I also like these cuts that we had in the tooling of the shoe on the outsole here. So I'm gonna try and mimic some of these. All right, just like that. And we also have this really cool element that Tom introduced into the design. This is kind of a helper line, I'm calling it, meaning I've sketched in a line nice and light to kind of give some directionality to my subsequent lines as I work on this midsole feature here. All right, so we've got this shape, I'm modifying it just a little bit but again, trying to stay true to Tom's design. And hopefully you guys can see the similarities there. It looks like we also have a couple grooves in the bottom of the shoe, like so. And so now I can turn off my red line sketch. And if I want to, you can actually tap the arrow tool in Procreate. Looks like we have a, an errant line there. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase a bit of this line but we can tap the arrow tool and that's going to give us the option to uh, warp or distort the sketch as much as we want. So I can hit warp and if I want a little bit more curve in the shoe or I wanna change the height, I can move things within reason just to kind of work the proportion and presentation of the design. So don't be afraid to warp your sketches if you need to, to help give you the results you want. So there's the after and there's the before. So before, a little bit more static, after has a little bit more life to it. Okay, so let's color block this design in. And I always keep my sketches toward the, the top in terms of layer order, because that's gonna lead to a lot cleaner presentation. I'm more of a line artist. So I'm gonna pick colors from Tom's design. So we have kind of this red color and Let's use the markers that I've been working on here 
for Procreate to shade this in. They do have a bit of texture, so I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this area in with these marker brushes, just like so. And now I can erase, which you can't really do with real markers, but that's one of the things we can do with these digital markers. So I've got this red, and if we want to hit it again, we can do that. <clears throat> these markers blend really well. They will be released soon. And perhaps you're watching this video later and they've already been released, but they do have really good blending properties if you like the look of a marker and you like to sketch with that medium. So putting in a little bit of <laughs> shadow core in that. Now I'm gonna pick this yellow it's actually kind of a mesh texture. We'll get that in using some brushes that I have as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and let's actually tweak this yellow, make it a little bit brighter. I'm gonna go ahead and shade this area and make sure I'm on a new layer. I am, that's good. So back to shading, filling in with this marker brush like so. Just like that, we have a little bit more yellow on the top right here. Okay, and like I said, just like a real marker, we can build up our tones, textures, uh, values if we need to. But unlike a real marker, we can pick whatever colors we want, which is awesome. So that's one of the things I do like about these digital tools is there's a lot of possibilities and things you can do with them as you're coming up with your concept sketches. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and let me just touch up a couple areas here with the yellow that I may have missed just right in here. So now I'm gonna do the tongue of the shoe. I'm gonna pick a warm gray and still use our marker brush here, new layer, warm gray. Just fill this in just like we would with a real marker, blend everything together and so on. All right, now I don't have the exact pattern here. So we're gonna do a little internet search, see if we can find something that works and throw it into the sketch as well. All right, but for now, let's clean this up like so. Just like that. And clean up with a little bit of this yellow in this area. I think I colored on the wrong layer. So I'm gonna pick my yellow layer and go ahead and shade in this little area that we forgot. All right, now for the inside of the shoe, just a deep gray. By inside, I mean right here on the throat of the shoe and on this little tongue piece, shade that in as well. And now we can get the tooling. I'm just gonna use the same gray for the tooling and we'll shade this out as we need to when we're finishing this up. So using that marker brush again, even has a paper-like paper -like texture to it, which is really nice to give you that uh, feel that is hopefully a little bit more real. Okay, so some of these elements, you know, we had this strong heel element here that Jordan put in the design or grooves and cutouts as well that I'm gonna just add a little bit of shading to as well as the tooling with this marker brush. So just building in a little bit of a shadow core, if you will, along the bottom here and the back of the shoe, just like that, just to kind of punch, punch our shadowing on the shoe. Now, it is technically better to work with like a multiply, that kind of thing, but the brush itself does a decent job of blending, so I'm just using the same gray I used on the outsole and blending that gray with the colors on top. So if you're careful with your opacity control, you can also kind of pull that off in your sketch. All right, so now we need to add some texture to this yellow area. So on a new layer, I'm going to scroll down in my new brush set. You guys don't have these yet. And I'm just gonna pick a texture. So I have these mesh brushes so if I scale up, pick black, you can see I can paint mesh on this shoe. So that's what I'm gonna do here is just paint this in. And the way this brush works is you wanna kinda have a nice consistent stroke with it so that the texture appears 
somewhat consistent in the area that you're shading. And if that doesn't make sense, wait till you try out the brush and you'll kind of understand what I'm saying. All right, so I've got that texture on the shoe, super fast, super easy, works really nicely with the, uh, works really nicely with the canvas here and the shape of the shoe. Above all this, now we're gonna kind of go above all the sketch lines and jump to one of these highlighter brushes. So I'm gonna pick this air, air highlighter soft and just on the opposite side of the shadow core on the shoe, I'm gonna hit it with some white, okay? On this upper surface next to the shadow core, hit it with white as well and on the back side. And we can play with the blending modes and opacity of this layer to really get the colors to play nicely. So tapping on the N next to the layer and playing with these blending modes, you can see how this kind of works. I like add, um, overlay, dodge. These are some modes you can play with, but we're gonna stick to add. And now I can play with this opacity slider to either increase or decrease the effect of that add. All right, so the red, I wanna build out the color a little bit more on this red. So I'm gonna pick this red, uh, maybe something like that. Go back to my red layer and I'm gonna go to this dirty airbrush and just kind of fill in a little bit of the color. Maybe make it a little bit more intense throughout. Go a little darker here. This light never hits the surface completely evenly. And we'll clean that up just by erasing on the outside. Another quick way to do this is if you have a layer that obscures your color, you can always take that layer and place it above the thing you wanna obscure. So if the red was on top, I could move it on top of the yellow and that would cover parts of the yellow, for example. All right, so on a new layer above the red, I'm gonna take my speckle dirty spray paint brush and I actually made this with textures that I sourced myself and I can just paint on top of the red here just to give it a bit of texture just like so we'll fade we'll make this a little bit faded using our opacity control two finger tap on the layer and slide and now we have a very subtle texture effect Okay, the other thing I can do now, Tom did not put stitch marks on his shoe and that's okay. I wanna add a few. So I'm gonna go to this brush, which I have, which is my double stitcher. And let's pick nice reddish brown and on a new layer, there we go. There's my stitch marks. We can even adjust the size of this. And now I can apply some stitches to this large red area. Okay, just like this, nice and easy. Like so. All right. Now, I wanna add a texture to the tongue of the shoe, this main spot here. So I could draw in my own texture or I could consult with the internet and find something. So I'm gonna go to my Safari and I was looking up uh, Chair One by Gerchik earlier. Now you know all the favorite websites I like to visit, but I'm gonna look up a Paisley pattern. Hit go. And when I go to images, I have a bunch of options here. Okay, so I just need to pick one that I think would work. Um, preferably something that is royalty free. However, just for purposes of the video here, and hopefully we don't get anyone too upset <laughs> for using their image, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick this Paisley pattern here from paisley.org it looks like. So let's tap on the website, see where it takes us. Paisley.org.uk, tap and hold, and I'm gonna hit copy. So now when I go back to Procreate, tap on the wrench, the option to paste is now active. Oh, there we are. The option for paste is now active, so I can tap on that. And now I have this Paisley. So let's go ahead and scale this up. And on top of that, I'm gonna actually warp the pattern so it appears to 
kind of follow the tongue of the shoe, meaning it, it's gonna look a bit compressed toward the shadow core and fade out. But I wanna give it the impression, the impression and appearance that it is warped. Tap on the arrow, that sets it in place. And now I want to adjust the hue saturation brightness. I'm gonna crank the saturation all the way down and we can adjust the brightness like so. And I also wanna adjust the curve. So I'm gonna create kind of an S curve by dragging this first quadrant down and the last quadrant up quite a bit. You can move them closer together, but this is the way that you can adjust the contrast in this app. Change the blending mode here to multiply. And now I'm going to erase the parts of this awesome paisley texture that we don't need, all right? So we'll erase the extra, and now I'm left with Paisley on the tongue, staying somewhat true to the initial design. I know Tom didn't use Paisley on his, but I felt like using it here. All right, so I kind of need to make this pop and feel a bit more three-dimensional. So let's crank the opacity down on the actual texture layer here. All right. Two finger tap, oh wait, not two finger tap, my bad. <laughs> tap on the layer, two finger tap, and then slide. Now you can see that texture is being adjusted. On top of all this, let's go ahead and introduce a bit of shading for the shadow core on the top here. A little bit too big on my brush, scale that down and start putting that shadow core in so it, again it feels like the surface is three-dimensional and wrapping now on top of all this i'm gonna use my rough stencil here to put some highlights on some of these edges so right on the shoe here where we have material changes if something's overlapping right just a little white pencil to kind of help that pop. Maybe it's the details on the tooling. And this pencil is kind of rough. So if you like a rough pencil, you will like this pencil. Personally, I do like a pencil that has, how many times can you say pencil in a sentence? But I do like having a rough texture when it comes to the pencils that I use. So that's, that's kind of how I, designed these brushes and I've had a friend testing them and he gave me some feedback he said I can tell this is a Spencer brush because it requires a little heavier heavier uh, touch and that's true um, I do believe in committing to your drawing and just going with the flow and seeing what happens so I think that's maybe what a bit of what he's feeling in the way these brushes are all right so at this point, I think we've been able to go from the initial sketch here. Let's scale this up, something like this, to our final sketch, and you can see what we have. One more finishing touch, maybe just a little shadow. And back to my marker brush here. I'm on a layer beneath all of this, and just using this gray marker, Remember the values in this tool, they do build on each other. So you kind of want to be aware of that as you apply your marker. If you lift and try to apply a subsequent stroke, it will uh, be impacted. But that is how I would redraw the original sketch with a couple tweaks to kind of help out the design and also Pay attention to and respect the original design intent. Thanks again, Tom, for submitting the sketch. Thanks for being a good sport and participating. And for you guys, I can't promise that I will resketch everything, but I do appreciate submissions. If you're open to it, I'd be happy to resketch or redraw something as part of this series on Sketch a Day. Well, thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, you're awesome. If you haven't made it this far, you don't know what I'm talking about, but you do want to hit subscribe and turn on alerts so you don't miss all the good stuff we're posting here. Definitely come say hi on the Instagram and the socials. I'm at sketchaday.com and I'm even on Twitter at daily sketches is my handle there. 
And you'll want to hit up sketchaday.com slash newsletter where you'll be able to sign up for my free super sketch tip guide. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next time right here on Sketch-A-Day.